G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. We are here on a brand new expansion for Age of Empires 4 with a brand new patch. Watching two pro players smack each other in the face until they are red. It is time for us to get down to business. Ladies and gentlemen, sporting in on the northwest side of the map in the color blue. As you see's legacy representing Team Elephant, it's Louis MT. And on the southeast side of the map in the color red, playing as the Abbasid Dynasty, it's Puppy Paw. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hill and Dale. It's been a while since we've been on this map. And if you're enjoying this slightly raised up content make sure you leave a like on the video it really helps out with the traction of the channel let's talk a little bit about this matchup we have got ourselves a good fashion classic matchup right here i say it's a classic even though it's not necessarily classic because we've only had juicy legacy for like what month at this stage but one thing to note is we've got a chinese variant here this civilization of course based on the chinese and there are some things that we know that we can translate over from that matchup into the abbasid dynasty matchup with Juicy's Legacy. Now, number one, it is going to be that we have got some very powerful units out on the field this game, and that's going to be your Zhuganu. The Zhuganu is a particularly difficult unit to deal a difficult unit to deal with for the Abbasid Dynasty. And that's because they love to go into camels. They love to get camel archers out on the map. They love to use their unique units. And the, re the reality is that the Zhuganu absolutely melts them. The Abbasid Dynasty have quite a bit of trouble dealing with large masses of Zhuganu until they reach Castle Age, at which point then they can get out their Mangonels, and then it's a whole different ball game once we get into that Imperial Age stage of the game. But I'm curious to see exactly how this looks to unfold, because typically on this map, we do have a little bit more of a passive game. Of course, one of the key factors here is that you can wall off the sides of your base, and what that does is it means that you're able to protect yourself and funnel those enemy units into one position, normally at the front of your base, and it keeps it very, very... Uh, very, very straightforward often on this map. One thing to note, though, is players will look to be fighting out over the gold veins in the Dale area. One of the other factors that have uh, affected the way that this map is played is that there used to be a large gold vein that spawned not close to the town center, but up on the hill. So often it would be like back here. That doesn't spawn anymore. So it means you actually have to get out onto the map that was one of the old cheeky strategies I used to do when I was playing as uh, the Chinese. I'd love this map. I just wall off every entrance to the base, go for like three town centers and just use my gold. I, I remember I used to keep an Imperial official on the mining camp gathering the gold. And then I would just use my market to buy other resources because it was just, it was like you, you would just use all the resources that were in your base. So you'd build farms, but you might need a little bit of wood or need a bit of stone and you could just do that. And then eventually you'd be able to push out with the resources that you've got. But Speaking of resources, take a look at this. Meditation Gardens for Louis MT coming up over on the west corner of the map. There is a wolf right outside of his vision. But as long as this wolf is a good boy and not a bitey boy, he will be okay. Because one of the things that these wolves do is they look to try and not rotate, but they, they kind of move around. They're not static all the time, even though he's sitting still right now. Sometimes he will move around. He'll move like a little bit, kind of like the sheep do as well. Let's check in over on the other side of the map and see how Puppy Paw is doing. It's going to be the eco wing for him, and we can already see he's looking to make a decision early on. I think it might be to head into his, his uh, Golden Age. And that definitely makes a lot of sense here. We can see him working towards these straggler trees. Vil's going to now transfer out over onto the wood line as well. He's going to hand in here. We can see that he's done a pretty decent job already sitting at 6 out of 10. That's going to push him up to 7 out of 10. At least it should push him up to 6 or to 7 out of 10. Why are you not connected to the network? If you're connected to the network, surely you're... Is It's just like, it's slightly too far, isn't it? Yeah, it is too. Yeah, it's like, it should be this tile right here that it needs to connect. So I need to throw down another house, but... Whether he does that before the town center is going to be a question. Meditation gardens. Almost up, but the eco wing is through. What kind of upgrades have we got on the way? It looks like we've got Wheelbarrow on the way. He's going to be working towards his Fertile Crescent upgrade as well. And expect to eventually see our Fresh Foodstuffs upgrade come through for Puppy Paw. So three key upgrades for the Eco Focus. Now on the other side of the map, the Jiang Nan Tower was coming down in the front of the base. There it is. Two villagers working on it at the moment. And Louis reaches the Feudal Age. Now, Louis still got quite a few villagers here on food. Actually, I take that back. It's only four villagers on food. So that's absolutely A-OK, -okay, Louis. You keep doing what you're doing. Let's check in with this Meditation Garden. So he's managed to get eight of the uh, the world's best berries. He's got a couple of trees in here as well, I might say. How many are we talking? Whew, that's, that's pr oh, oh, this is a nice Meditation Gardens, dude. This is legit. Okay. So you've got eight berry bushes. So 64 food coming through from that. 
And then on top of that, you've got 27 uh, wood per minute, which is going to come up to 54. So you're talking about 120 worth of resources that's coming through right now. That's pretty damn nice for Louis MT early on in this game. But it is a little bit delayed. His second town center. We can see he's just about ready to throw it down. He's going to be waiting for that Song Dynasty. Once it comes in, he should be able to do a force drop off. He's got the resources for it now. And he can throw that TC down. Typically, we're going to see it in the back of the base. Probably right here behind the, the first TC. Just keep everything compact. Uh, but doesn't actually throw down the TC. There we go. Okay, he's going to go for it here. Is he going 3TC? I think he's going 3TC. Uh, that, that's part of the reason why he was so delayed. And you see, see he didn't even drop off the stone. It's because he's just going to go straight back over to the stone. He's going to do 3TC. Spots his enemy out. TC coming up for Puppy Paw over on the stone as well. And these guys are both getting ready for 3TC. So we got ourselves a little bit of a boom off. If you haven't already, go grab yourself something to eat, something to drink. Come back in 10 minutes and the action will begin. Otherwise, you're more than welcome to wait here with me while we just kind of chill out and, and look forward to it. Talk a little bit of... Uh, what, what do you guys want to talk about? What can we talk about? I mean, the holiday season's coming up. Do we talk about that? We can talk about that. What do you got? What do you got planned for the holidays? For me, I, I love. Uh, I, I visit my parents, you know, and it, it sucks, right? Because I, I, I wish I got to see them more. But you know, it's it's one of those weird sort of things where the further you are away from the parents, it kind of feels like the more you see them. When when they're only five minutes away, it feels like oh, they're only five minutes away. So you know, I don't have to talk to them. I don't have to call them because if I want to see them, I just go over and see them. But how often do you actually want to see them? You, you got you got a busy life, right? You got a lot going on. But I, I've found that as I've lived further away from them, they make an effort to come out of their way. And, you know, we've got to make the same effort to go see them. But it feels like I see them a fair bit. You know, it's, it's got to be four, five, six times a year. Somewhere in that region. We probably go up there twice. They come down probably three, four times as well. So we get to see them a fair bit. But anyway, anyway look, that's, that's enough about me. Let's get back to the action. The golden tier one has come through now. Have a look at this. Puppy Paw working towards that third TC. Where's he going to put it? In fact, does he? No, he doesn't. He doesn't have... I was thinking, does he have resources for a fourth one? He was on stone for a while back here, but it's just going to be that second TC. Has picked up the Fertile Crescent. No real surprise there. So we'll reduce the cost of their TCs. In fact, both of these towns... Or both of these... Uh, these towns... Both of these uh, civilizations are able to reduce the cost of their town centers. Look at Puppy Paw. We take a look at his. He's got a 300 wood 263 stone town center. Compare that over to his opponent, who's running 240 wood and 350 stone. There we go. Uh, third TC is indeed coming up. So it's just going to be three TCs from both of these players. Uh, normally the follow-up from this is going to be Castle H. Uh, but there's different ways that you can go about it. Number one way that you go about it is you actually make just a couple of units. Um, so quite often with the Abbasid Dynasty, you might see some camels together with some horsemen. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's going to be that case today. Instead, we're going to be seeing some spearmen. And that's because he has already scouted from his opponent that there are horsemen out on the map here. So naturally, you want to go into the counter of the unit that your opponent has got. You want to be reactive to what you see rather than proactive to what they might make. So that's always important to consider. You know, you wouldn't go archers thinking, oh, maybe there's going to be some spears coming out. It's like, well, I see my threat right now. I see my threat is the horseman. So I'm going to counter that. But let's check back in over on that north side. See how our juicy legacy player is doing. He's got nine vills on gold. So going to be looking for upgrades. Going to be looking for age ups. The archery range is going to be coming down. He's done a decent job in getting up the walls as well. Have a look at this. Top side completely walled in. Bottom side slowly coming up. There's a few little holes in here. Obviously, the boar was a bit of an issue for him. But now Puppy Paw going to be making his way across the map. And you've got to get this villager on the right side of history. We don't, we don't want him to be walled out. No, oh, little villager. We loved you. Oh, he, he did fix the wall. Okay. I, I was going to say, because I, I think there's an opening. Or the, I, I thought... <gasps> oh, 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 Lord. That was, that was a little bit scary right there. Shukunu does come out anyway. It's, he's going to be fine. It's not... Not the end of the world, even if it did go down, but archery range now coming up here as well for Puppy Paw. Both of these players working towards that castle age, but have a look at the gold. Gold income for nine, for both of these players, still pretty low. 214, 500 for, for Louis. Did, where did that come from? I thought I saw four villages on gold. I guess I read, I must have read it wrong. Imperial official numbers have been building up here. He's got one on wood, one on gold, one on food, and of course, one collecting taxes. Beautifully played here by Louis. I love seeing it. It's exactly what you want to do with your four Imperial officials in the feudal age. Now, gates going to be coming up here for Louis in the front of the base. Walls starting to come up for Puppy Paw as well. Both of these players preparing for the mid game. What are the unit compositions that we're going to be seeing out from these players? I would suspect we're probably just going to be seeing crossbow spear. Crossbow spear is like your 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 safe bet, right? Like you go crossbow spear, you're going to be okay. You're not going to be worried. A couple of sheep making their way back to the homeland, hoping to one day reunite with their brothers and sisters under the mill. 
You want to know something though with the sheep? Did, did you know that they can? Uh, <laughs> did you know they can actually leash onto uh, gates and walls? And one of the other things to note with them is you can actually leash them onto uh, uh, blueprints for walls. I didn't actually realize that until I, I tried it and I had a whole bunch of sheep out here and I was like, okay, I'm just going to draw a wall from my sheep to my town center. And then I just, you know, took them along the wall, basically. It was pretty cool. Anyway, that's something that you can bring out into your game as well. But age up coming through. It's going to be the Shaolin Monastery coming through for Louis MT. He's the first to age up 10 minutes 30. Not a bad little time here. 3 TC into Castle Age with a couple of units, by the way, before 11 minutes. That is very, very competitive. I think for our English times, we normally aim for around that time as well. So he's on par with the English. Food transition, not yet through, by the way. Keep that in mind. Normally at this point for the English, they'd have about 24 farms that are up. Uh, Scout on the south side is just working to come through. Culture Wing is on the way as well for Puppy Paw. So he could potentially be looking at an Imperial Age after this. He is stacking up a fair bit of resources. We'll switch it over to Income so we can see exactly where his head is at. Still 1,500 food a minute during this age up period. And he's not training any units which makes me think either he's getting ready where's the production we've got to see plenty of production or he's just going to click imperial age i think it could be a fast imperial out of him but we'll have to wait and see exactly what the plan is keep in mind he does have the reduced cost of age ups from the culture wing remember that you do have the preservation of knowledge uh, which will affect your age advancements just a couple of spears coming out what does he get from imperial though like let's say hypothetically hypothetically he goes imperial what does he do goes military wing obviously but what do you do for units do you just go into archers i feel like you probably just go into mass archers right go imperial get elite archers and then just get like plus three get compos work towards incendiary arrows i think that's probably the play gonna be the best way to deal with the the Zhuganu, at least early on because they're gonna be dishing out damage but uh against elite units you should be fine age up comes through let's see what he goes for does he look to make units straight away he does Look at the resources he's got stacked up here, though. How much production are we talking right now for Puppy 4? Can we do a quick production check? Only three and three. It really doesn't feel like a lot. Three rangers, three raxes. Look how much he's got queued in here. If I was coaching him right now over on Patreon, which, by the way, make sure you check out if you're interested in some coaching content. One of the things I'd be saying is, like, you've got three town centers. You've got 70 villages when you age up. That's a lot of villages. You've got a massive economy here. The production that you've got is nowhere near enough for what you have your your economy on top of that when you're aging up you've got a huge amount of resource bank that is building up here until you get to your gulams until you get to your crossbows so either you make units in the transition period or you add in a little bit more production because at the moment only only the the three of each you can see just how many units he's got queued up behind this and on top of that there's so many resources in the bank still it's going to take him a couple of minutes to get through this and remember that those resources continue to scale this stage second wall has come down now for puppy port looking to just keep himself a little bit safer bide himself a bit more time crossbow numbers are building towards the front he's going to go out on a population block for a little bit here louis definitely not thinking about going imperial we can see that look at the numbers he's got he is pretty low on the income amount but now those relics are getting picked up he's managed to secure one in the bag already two going to be coming through for him and he, keep in mind he should have that safe one no it's not a safe one it is a contested towards the north side as the spears begin to make their way around shaolin monk is out of here getting chased and you can see he's out here on the map plenty of units here for him louis doing a wonderful job on the juicy legacy early in this castle age to put pressure onto his opponent i think one of the biggest mistakes you can make as the abbasid dynasty is not training units in the transition period because a lot of people will save their resources saying i'm going to go into crossbows i'm going to go into gulams but the reality is, is you do fall behind on those unit numbers. And if you even just going into like spears in the transition period and archers is absolutely fine in my opinion. And then just mixing those in with your inevitable golems, with your inevitable crossbows. Um, that can be a big mistake that you make. And I feel like Puppy Port, it's not that he's fallen behind the eight ball at all because you can see his unit numbers are pretty decent here, but he still is stacking up a lot of resources here. And we check the production. Uh, actually, that's Puppy Port. Oh, that's uh, Louis. He's still training units pretty much full time here and yet is unable to spend those resources. And we want to try and get them out as quickly as we can. Now I'm going to throw down another Rax here, trying his best to keep up with that amount of uh, of units that are here, but the number's starting to build for him. At the same time towards that east side, it looks like the spear numbers are increasing. He's going to try and pick it up with the Imam. Does fall back to the spears. Definitely the right call here. The Imam's on three health. The scout could go for it. He's only got four health himself. If he takes one shot, he's going to go down and we hear deleting coming behind the scene. It's going to be the mill that gets deleted. He's gone for the triple. Oh, baby, a triple. And the scout, unfortunately, won't be able to snipe out the Imam. 
course, it's not self-healing either, so keep that in mind. Sacred Sight's now being captured. And units in the middle of the map beginning to move towards Louis' base. Overall, a pretty passive game that is now really starting to come up to the next level. Really starting to heat up in here. He's picked up his level 2 food gathering. Horticulture is online. The uh, the fertilization is online as well. And now starting to take control, control of the map. Have a look at the outposts that are up here. Done a really, really good job with these outposts. Just one villager doing it all, all on the top side here. He's done very well with that. Now on the bottom side as well, working his way in. He's got the spring on emplacements online. One of the things that I often forget about is just having that nice little trickle of stone. It can be really helpful because there are times where you're like, I want a stone wall and now you can. Or I want to throw up an emplacement. Now you can. So it's very nice. And often we think about stone as like one of those resources where it's like, I only get it when I need it. And I need it for a town center and I need it for a keep and that's it. But we do often forget about it for those circumstances. But now forced away from the front line, the crossbows together with the spears. This is the, the combination that we, we kind of figured that he'd go into. This is pretty standard approach from the Abbasid dynasty, even from the uh, pretty much every civilization at this point is a very standard approach. Uh, but uh, we'll ride on board with Louis and see how he's going to look to play it. He's got a lot of palace guards out here, but the trouble is that he's going to have crossbows to deal with. I guess realistically, the, uh, the palace guards are going to be quite effective against him just because the there's not a whole bunch of a powerful front line. He's got the, the 16 Gulams, which are going to rip through him if he stays and fights with him, but he's just going to run past those. The palace guards should be able to do a decent job of coming in, surrounding, and killing that siege eventually, eventually inevitably. Farm transition well and truly through back here. Louis making a little bit of a mistake. We've seen him do this before where he doesn't have a... Uh, he's just going for a second layer instead of putting like the mill in between these. I, I, I should actually do the math on that. I'm pretty sure the mill would almost certainly be more effective than an additional farm with just longer drop-offs. But now we're right on board. The battle about to begin. These two players engaging. You can see the Springlets firing off. What are these two up to? Looks like they would manage to trade out the two versus the three. It looks like they will eventually come out on top. And now, away from this, the Abbasid Dynasty looking to overwhelm the Juicy Legacy early on here. The Battering Rams doing work. The Crossbows forcing back all of these Palace Guards. Palace Guards definitely need to head towards this Mango, or maybe towards this Siege here as well. Managing to chase back the Nesta Beezer. Keep going to be coming up in the back line. He's trying his best to keep his head above water, and the Keep is definitely going to go towards that. Repair comes through on the Nest of Beasts. Palace Guard's doing a decent job on the Nest of Beasts, getting some very good damage in on this angle. And now continuing to repair up those Nest of Beasts. Wants to make sure he keeps them alive and indeed, all of the men at arms will be chased away, or rather all of the Gulams will be chased away. And towards that front, the siege continues to push. Decent little hold there by Louis. I think the keep was instrumental in it. He realized when he saw the keep, he could not push any further into it. And so naturally just had to fall back. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, we've had attacks going over. And look at this. Louis actually walling in his opponent on every angle. He's saying, you're only going to fight me through the front. That's it. We're not going to fight anywhere else. If you want to fight, we'll fight at the front. And that's exactly what he does. Nesta Bees looking to try and tee off. Unable to find that shot. Greased Axel's not yet through for them. We can see that. They're lacking that little movement speed. Could just look to fire at the Mango instead. Not even going to be able to find it. Manganel just going to get eaten alive by the Palace Guards. And the Palace Guards stand strong. The military count at the moment is in favor of Puppy Pori. He is continuing to build Shaolin Monk out here. Just looking to get some Bamboo boys out. Unfortunately. Crossbow bolts do beat Bamboo. It is, uh, it's, it's an unfortunate fact of being a Shaolin monk. Let's check in with Puppy Paw, see how he's doing. Imperial Age not in sight. 36 farms. Not a bad little farm boom that he's got going on here. Compare it over to, to his opponent. 41 farms. Pretty even Stevens at the moment. More farms continue to come down. Look at how many farms he's got here. It does throw down that extra mill. Does the right thing. How is that mill even legal? Okay. There, there, is it, wait, is that a... Is this like a stealth forest? It looked like he completely cancelled that tree. Let's check back in towards that top side. More villagers. Look like they're going to get caught out of position as the Gulams begin to come through. Louis just, just teasing. Just distracting. Distracting the caster as well as his opponent. He's already got three relics in the bag. Is he going for Yuan Dynasty? He could be going for Yuan Dynasty. No, he's just going to throw, throw it in the monastery. 
Not going to be looking for the pagodas at this stage. Villagers up towards the top side. He does have plenty of stone walls up here. I will compliment Louis on this. You know, one of the most difficult things I often find in these late game battles is the APM to wall. It can be really difficult because there's so many things that you want to wall. And walling is not just like a click and then forget. You've got to gather the resources you need. You've got to prep the villagers for it. You've got to make sure they're in position. You've got to make sure that there's no enemies that are threatening them. And if there are, you've got to be able to clean them out. There's so many factors in that. But have a look at this. We've got Imperial Age on the way now. It's going to be the Temple of the Sun that's going down. Where is it though? It's in the back of the base. He's opting for Temple of the Sun first over the Juicy Library. That's going to give him that movement speed increase. Definitely the right call when you've got these many palace guards on the map. Keep in mind, these guys are faster than your average bear. And now they're just going to be going even faster. 1.58 movement speed. Once he gets those elite upgrades in, which are now coming through, these things are going to be untouchable. Also expect to see a University thrown down shortly. Expect to see Elite Army Tactics coming online for him. But at the moment, he's maxed out 197 out of 200 population. Only 32 palace guards on the field. These are all the palace guards that we see. The rest of it is siege. That siege largely in the center of his base. Three Springholds, four nests of bees. Sacred Sight neutralized in the north and play is now really setting up for that late game. Puppy Paw going to be going into the military wing. You can see him just working out these angles. He's trying to find a way through, making sure his opponent knows about the fact that uh, that he is not going to let him wa be walled in. He's, he's not going to not gonna allow that one little bit. Outpost back here, just causing havoc. You can see, oh my god, Louis actually put down the battering ram here. Just to, He is so annoying with these things. I feel like I'm watching Beastie play right now. Louis is uh, very, very similar style to Beastie in that regard. You know, walling up everything, annoying with battering rams. Siege workshop behind the wall that's making a single battering ram to kill the wall. Just, just so that you're, you know, you're really enforcing that upon your opponent. Like, no, you will be walled in. Like, I, I, I will wall you in. Making, oh, oh, this is actually big brain. Oh, this is giga brain. He's going to force the wall down. And with that, we'll then be able to go through his own wall that's got the gate, get through to the other side, and have a look at the response. He's not going to be able to get over onto the other side simply because the wall is here preventing it. It's actually a Giga Brain play. This is massive. This is huge. This can be game ending right now, what we are about to see as the wall goes down and the palace guards begin to run through. He's just going to clean up the battering ram straight away. He wants to avoid dying from those crossbows. Now towards the middle of the map, we hear more action, but I'm more interested in this right now. The palace guards loop around into the base of the Abbasid dynasty. It looks like the outpost has been doing a little bit of damage, but he is going to clean up villagers now. What's the villager count at 130? Expect to see it continue to fall as he makes his way through to the back. The Imperial Age is going to come through and he's just looking to straight away get to the gate. If he can block the gate, then all these villagers will go down. And that's exactly what he looks to do. Now standing in front of the gate, he's going to block them. The villagers doing a little bit of a conga line trying to find their way through. A couple of them managed to make it through alive to tell the tale. Do not go outside the gates, they scream. Do not. It's dangerous. And the palace guards just almost like... Gates? Oh, you won't have to worry about the gates for much longer, my friend. They won't be allowed for, or they won't be alive for much longer. Louis MT with an absolute giga brain wall in play right there. I gotta be honest, I don't think I've ever seen something that clean before. That is one of the most clean fights, not fights, but strategies, tactics I've ever seen in the late game. Utilizing his own stone walls so, so intelligent. Absolute beautiful play right there. And now towards the front, Looks like those crossbows are inevitably making their way back to the palace guards, but look how fast they go. 1.58 movement speed, and that's not even with their charge. Remember, with their charge, they go faster. So when he looks to charge down onto these villagers here, it'll go from 1.58, probably up to 1.94. So he's, he's actually faster than a horseman. A horseman's what, 1.88, I think it is? I think that's what it works out to be. And now just cleaning up more and more villagers. Palace guards just doing palace guard things. This is what they love. This is how they thrive, the Juicy Legacy able to clean up the opponent from all different angles. Juicy's library is online. He's going to be going into Dynastic Protectors together with Cloud of Terror. Oh, all right. We get to see it today. Come on, give it to us. More palace guards have made their way through. This opening on the on the top side of the base is still here. And I love that his opponent is not able to use it, but he is able to use it. And I think that's so smart, so intelligent from Louis. An actual massive big brain play now. But right, let's check in with his base and see how he's doing. I'm not going to call the macro police. We're 24 minutes into the game. It's uh, that, that, That's pretty reasonable, I would say, to have something like that. Plenty of farms back here. How many farms are we talking? 60 farms. Not bad. But have a look at the military numbers at the moment. It's 86 military population for Puppy Paw. 
against his opponent who's got 21 military population. Sacred victory online. Probably not going to be happening though. There are a lot of units out. Puppy Paw definitely, you can feel it in his bones. He wants to push. He needs to push. He knows he needs to push, but he's just struggling. He's struggling to keep his head above water. The palace guards continue coming through, finding these different angles. We can see horsemen now online as well. Plenty of HP on these bad boys, even though they're yet to get their upgrades through. Elite Camel Riders coming in. Speaking of plenty of HP, 320 on them. Going to have biology on the way shortly, I'm confident. Now more and more units funneling towards the middle. It's going to be the Yuan Raiders that make their appearance for today. Trying to find a way onto the back line. The crossbows are here. Keep in mind, they do a little bit of extra damage against workers and against siege. They don't get any bonus damage. And now looking to clean up the middle of the map. It looks like Puppy Paul wasn't paying attention. Where are his units? He's got a couple back here streaming up towards the top. I tell you what, those camels could have helped out in the middle. And now more battering rams make their way to the front. You want to know what I think is broken? S battering rams that come out of the siege workshop, man. They are so damn good, dude. I don't know why. They just build differently. Constructed alternatively. But now you want raiders once again coming through. Looks like they've been debuffed by the camels. They don't give a, they don't give a crap, though. They're going to continue pushing forward. And look how quickly the tides have turned. Louis thrown away a couple of villagers, but he says, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to push into the enemy base here. Yuan Raiders get absolutely melted. Keep in mind, they are light melee cavalry, like the horsemen, so the crossbows don't get bonus damage. Nesta B's in trouble. Palace Guards move forward. The Camel Rider's going to be able to find them, make a connection. It's decent. Behind this, we see a reinforcement getting cleaned up by Puppy Paw. He's fighting on, holding on as hard as he can in this game. More Yuan Raiders looking to break through, but Puppy Paw holding strong. Unable to one-shot the Yuan Raiders just yet. 240 health on these bad boys. The crossbows yet to get their incendiary arrow upgrade. More camels coming to the front. Now we get to see the power of the Abbasid in the Imperial Age. But hold your horses. The numbers are falling. They're dwindling. He's got more reinforcements back. Look at the Yuan Raiders. They are coming out full speed towards the enemy base. The sacred sites have been neutralized. He doesn't have to think about it. But you know what he's got to start thinking about? He's got to start thinking about this economic deficit that he's dealing with here. It is absolutely terrible you can see he's actually managed have a look at have a look at the unit numbers oh he's just got to tap out right there there's too many yuan raiders running into his base they sprint past the front line and say see you later mate have a good one ladies and gentlemen that is going to be it today make sure you go check out egc tv this weekend 15 gmt saturday and sunday link is in the description what a what a game from louis mt and what a bloody highlight on that top side of the map